My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have ordered us to take our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as a role model. As a role model. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam is not only a role model in the way he performed the prayer or hajj, but he was a role model in all aspects of his life. And he should be our own role model as well in all aspects of our life, especially our manners, our characteristic. It should be something we try our best to copy the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the Prophet Sallallahu was raised to be the best of character Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala described him wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin you are a mercy to mankind you are a, a, a person who possess the best of all manners Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam it is so important, especially in these days, especially in these days, to go back and to search and to look at the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to seek from it lessons and power, to empower us today in a time where there's so much confusion, where there's so many, uh, 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 with so much differences, that where you, in, in darkness, that where you lead the light the most and the guidance the most. And today, I would like to speak about one aspect of the Prophet Sallallahu manners or the Prophet Sallallahu characteristic, which is him being the most optimistic person that you can ever think of. Optimism is a, such a beautiful character, such a beautiful quality if you have it. It's a quality that turn everything around and make you always feel empowered and strong I know we're living in a time, as I said, tough time, hard time, politically, economically, uh, 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 in so many areas, there's people can complain and point out here and there so many problems in individual level, community level, nation level, worldly level, you name it. But still, that sense of optimism should always grow strong as the problems grow strong as well. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the sharia of Islam, the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, basically teach us to have that sense of optimism in our life. For instance, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he sees or he hears a negative name, give a negative connotation, give, make people down, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately will change it. For instance, he asked the person, where you came from? He said, I came from a valley known as the Valley of Al-Dalala, Shi'b Al-Dalala. Qala bal huwa Shi'b Al-Hidaya. It is the Valley of Guidance. Which land do you live? He said, I live in a land known as the Dusty Land. Afira. Qala bal hiya Khadira. It is basically, it is the Green Land. Yeah, what's your daughter's name? Qala hiya Asiya. Sinner. He said, no, she is Jamila. Even when he moved to Medina, you know, the Prophet ﷺ's city was known in the history as Yathrib. Yathrib has a negative connotation. It means decreasing, something decrease, something take away something from you. So the Prophet ﷺ said, no one allowed to call the city anymore Yathrib because it have a negative meaning basically connected to the word. And he called it Tayba, the good city, the city which is known today as Tayba, al Medina al Munawwarah. The Prophet Sallallahu city became a city known as a city of light. That sense of optimism, even when he saw a man is named Harb, war, he said, no, your silm, your peace. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I can go on and on in hundreds of examples. When he sees something sounds negative, he will change it to make it positive, to give that sense of optimism. Not only that, even in the most difficult times, he installed the sense of optimism in the heart of his companions. When he left Mecca, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alone with his companion Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu arda, in that difficult moment, can you imagine you leaving your, your home, you didn't know what's the future carrying for you, uh, uh, from a human being perspective. So in, in this point, Suraqah ibn Malik, he, hunted, he was 
uh, searching for the Prophet وسلم, and he found the Prophet وسلم, in, the, in his way to Medina. In that moment, look at the Prophet وسلم, telling Suraqah ibn Malik that one day will come and you will be carrying the bracelets of Kisra uh, 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 and put it and you will have it. The bracelets that Yus Kisra used to have, which is the king of the Persian Empire. In the time of Al Khandaq, where the Sahaba radiallahu anhu mardahum see that they're surrounded with the enemy from every direction, and only few of them left, with the whole entire Arabia gathered to uh, 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 kill the Prophet and to destroy his city and uh, his state. At that moment, the Prophet told the companions that my religion, my basically ummah, will reach to the farthest per point east and west. In the moment of difficulty, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made sure that they have that sense of trust and optimism because that's the fuel that keep us always going. The moment you give up hope, the moment you can't survive, you can survive. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shows us in his Sharia another concept of, uh, uh, in, in our deen that installed the concept of optimism. For instance, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whenever you make dua, whenever you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at the language that you use. Look at the verb that you use. It's a command. Oh Allah, forgive me. And you nobody give a command to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are so certain about what you're asking. That's why you're not even allowed to say, if you wish. لا يقول أحدكم اللهم اغفر لي إن شئت. You're not allowed to say, oh Allah, forgive me if you wish. No, you should be certain about what you're requesting. That sense of optimism, that sense of optimism when you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you pray to your Lord, is something so unique, so much needed today in our time, in our life. But, sin, but optimism, it doesn't just happen like that. I wish it does. There is nothing like after this khutbah, you're gonna say, oh, I heard the khutbah about optimism, let me push the bottom of optimism. And I'm going to walk out of this khutbah, an optimistic person. It doesn't work like that. Anything that you want to adopt, any character you want to develop in you, in most of the cases, is something you have to achieve. You have to work on it. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ بِالتَّصَبْرُ وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمُ مَنْ يَتَصَبَّرْ يُصَبِّرْهُ اللَّهُ وَقَبْلَهَا قَالْ وَإِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمُ he said, learning, knowledge, is will happen, is will, ha will happen to you, you will have knowledge if you start seeking knowledge. Everybody knows knowledge has to be acquired. You don't born, you, nobody, of us, no one of us born knowledgeable person. All of us came out of other mother wombs, as Allah said, knows nothing. Then we acquired knowledge. Then the Nabi Sallallahu followed that with a unique, Point, he said, and also patience. It's not going to happen like that. It's by seeking that character. And also being, uh, 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 have the ability to be patient. It's something you need to seek. You need to practice. Forbearing, something that you need to practice. In another word, that you acquire that. So even the akhlaq, the character, something that you need to develop, you need to work on. And the same thing with optimism. It is something that you need to work on. You need to change. You need to adapt to that character and to work on it. And I would like to share with you a few points. It will help you. It might something you take away today to home and to think about and to start to work on it. What can make you an optimistic person? A person who always see opportunities in his or her difficulties versus the pessimist people who always see difficulties in their opportunities. When there is an opportunity, they always come with these all kind of difficulties that this can wrong, this can go bad. This is an a pessimist person. That's not how the Prophet ﷺ used to be. The Prophet ﷺ was the most optimistic person you can think of. Thinking always of opportunities that he can have during the difficulties of time. So number one, the strong, the, the correct understanding of the concept of Al-Qadr. The concept of predestiny. It is one of the beliefs, the article of faith for all of us as Muslims. To understand the concept of what is known as Al-Qadr, the predestiny. 
when you study that, when you understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for first point related to this, it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good and the source of all good. Inna Allah azza wa jal biyadihi al-khayr kulluh subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ilayhi al-khayr kulluh wa minhu al-khayr kulluh wa al-sharru laysa ilayk rabbana tabarakta wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never, will never ever decree upon you something that it is evil or the, the evil in it outcome the good. That's part of our belief as Muslim. Nothing Allah will decree upon anyone something that the wrong or the evil or the bad of it will outcome the good. That's a simple belief uh, that every Muslim should have. That we always trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever He decreed upon us, always the good outcome the bad. Not necessarily according to your timeline, but according to His timeline. Not according to your limit knowledge of the consequences of the actions, but according to His knowledge and seeing the big picture. Seeing that His creations in general, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know that. And that's something make you very... Uh, 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 trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever he decreed upon you. And you know there is always coming well, come out of it, will come out of it. You know, there is uh, a king was once traveling with his best friend. His best friend is a known, of a, uh, is known with uh, this, a word that's very common. He always say alhamdulillah. So whatever happened, he always say alhamdulillah. So when the king was uh, traveling for hunting trip, and he cut the tip of his finger. So the blood started gushing and the friends of the king said, Alhamdulillah. King got mad. Why would you say Alhamdulillah for that? I just cut the tip of my finger. I'm going to be able to use the arrows and bow. You know, it's going to ruin my trip. And he was so mad at him and he started, he ordered the soldiers to take him away. When he was leaving, he said, Alhamdulillah. And even if I lost this friendship, Alhamdulillah. The king became more furious and angry and promised that when he go back to the land, he will punish him severely. Next day, the king go on his hunting trip and he uh, basically has a very strong horse and he got uh, uh, separated from his uh, uh, guard and ended up in his enemy's land who they took him and they said that this is sacred land and anyone walking to the sacred land must be killed and executed and be sacrificed to their gods. They laid him down in that big, shiny, uh, 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 spotless uh, marble slab to sacrifice him to their God. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. That the priest of that group said that this person cannot be killed, cannot be sacrificed. He's a bad luck for a nation if we do so because he's missing the tip of his finger. And for our God, it has to be a complete body. And they just let him go because of that finger that he injured or the tip of his finger that he cut it off. The whole entire way back, he kept saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. He got his friend out of, basically where he locked him up and he said, there must be something good happened to you too. Because he said, Alhamdulillah. He said, great king, the only one who has a horse like yours is me. If I was with you today, early in the morning, we will end up both of us in that line. And they will let you go because of your, the tip of your finger is missing. And I will be the one who will be sacrificed to their gods. So Alhamdulillah that you locked me up. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Wasn't for nothing that the first verse, the first verse in the Quran is, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. It's to build that sense of optimism. I'm always grateful and thankful to Allah for whatever happened. I always say, I praise you, my Lord, because I know you. I know your nature as a just, fair, loving God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also part of understanding of Al-Qadr that we know that in order for you to achieve something, you have to take the necessary means. That's in itself, that's in itself, give you that sense of optimism that I work and I will get my basically at the result that I want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things not going to happen by itself. You're never ever going to leave as they say. You're never ever going to be able to leave a footprint in the beach if you sit in your bottom. You have to walk in order for you to leave these footprints. 
and you put effort and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for it. Part of our belief in Al-Qadr that we know Allah does not force anyone to anything. You came to this masjid by your choice. And if you don't, if you want to stay home, it will be your choice as well. It's your choice. Imagine if we believe that we have no choice. What sense of optimism anyone can have? That's why part of our belief in Al-Qadr that Allah give you the ability to make the choice, the ability to make the chase, the, cho the choices in your life. I might not control the wind when I sail on the, in the sea, but I always can adjust my sailing to, to reach a new destination. I always have the ability to do that. So that's number one. This, the correct understanding of the concept of Al-Qadr, increase and knowledge in this area, increase your sense of optimism and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, which is very ironic, very unique, and a lot of people underestimated it. It is the, basically the look, the way you carry yourself, the way you carry yourself, your style, the way you dress, the way you smell, the way you basically uh, care for your appearance means a lot of building a sense of optimism. Why do you think the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw a man, he's completely white hair in his head and his beard and messy. And Nabi ﷺ said, why don't you change your white hair, your gray hair? Change the color of your gray hair. Don't look too uh, old like that. And then Nabi Sallallahu said, if you grow hair, take care of it. Why do you think we are highly recommended? Some ulama even seem, seem to see it is can near obligatory to take a shower before you come to Jumu'ah prayer. You have to clean yourself. You have to remove the hair, the, basically like the underarm hair and other areas. Why you need to, to trim your, your nails so you don't look like animals? You look clean, you look sharp. Why the Prophet loved perfumes? And, and, and he made it so obvious that something beautiful to have. All this for what? To build that character. Because the way you, you look sharp, you look clean, you look uh, 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 good, it impacts your psychology. Every single research today says that our physiology impacts our psychology. The way you carry yourself means a lot. Means a lot to you. I live in the United States of America. When I study the history of America, you know when they brought the slaves from Africa, they were not slaves in their country. They were enslaved in, in Europe and enslaved in, in America. You know what the thing that they used to do? They ordered them not allowed to take a shower for months. Why? So they can smell like animal, so they can look like animal, so you, they behave like animals. They want to break their spirits, not allowed to wear proper clothes. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jumu'ah wears special clothes, in Eid special clothes. His clothes always looks nice. It's not about being rich at all or have a lot of money. It's about you care for yourself, for, for yourself. Also, number three, one of the things that bring a lot of sense of optimism to you, to make an optimistic person, to learn how to smile. Smiling is such a beautiful thing. It doesn't make only people around you feel good, it makes you yourself feel good. Smiling is the sunnah of the Prophet And I'll tell you the truth, that it is so sad that we as a Muslims all over the globe, all over the globe, I travel from the farthest east to the farthest west. Unfortunately, it is something missing among Muslim community. When you go to the masjids, people just give you that straight look. You know, that I don't know what is the deal with that. You know, we always been the ummah of a smile. Why we lost that? Why when we talk about smiling, we think of other nations other than Muslims? And Nabi Sallallahu Jabir said, I never met the Prophet I never met the Prophet Not a single time in my life. He said, I never met the Prophet unless he's smiling. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, inside the house, he used to smile more than outside the house. Radiallahu anha wa arda. And plenty of companions, so many of them, said the same thing about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Smiley face, yes face, welcoming face. And so many of us, unfortunately, lost their smiles. But the good news, that your smile didn't go anywhere. It just right, right under your nose. So smile. This is the sunnah of your Prophet Sallallahu Your smile at your brothers, it is a form of charity.